How we doing everybody? This is the Pop Music Freak back with another song facts countdown video. We're up to song number 886 of my 1,000 favorite songs of all time. From the year of my birth, it was the 17th number one hit for the Beatles, the Fab Four. The song was Get Back. Something was a little bit different about this song from all the others. Want to know what it is? The label. The label says the Beatles with Billy Preston. The late Beatles with Billy Preston, yes. He was a keyboardist. He played the organ on this song and a few other songs. They recorded in 1969. He's a big part of the late Beatles. <laughs> and uh, a nice addition, I think. Absolutely. So, let's go over the song facts of his song. Get Back is a song recorded by the British rock band The Beatles and Billy Preston and written by Paul McCartney, though credited to the Lennon-McCartney partnership. It was originally released as a single on April the 11th of 1969 and credited to The Beatles with Billy Preston. The album version of the song contains a different mix that features a studio chat between Paul McCartney and John Lennon at the beginning, which lasts for 20 seconds before the song begins, also omitting the coda featured in the single version. The version became the closing track of Let It Be, 1970, which was released just after the group split up. The single version was later issued on the compilation albums 1967 and 1970, 20 Greatest Hits, Past Masters, and One. The single reached number one in the UK, the US, Ireland, Canada, New Zealand, the Netherlands, Australia, France, West Germany, Mexico, Norway, Switzerland, Austria, and Belgium. <sighs> Mouthful. It was the Beatles' only single that credited another artist um, at their request. Get Back was the Beatles' first single release in true stereo in the U.S. In the U.K., the Beatles' singles remained monoral, mono until the following release, The Ballad of John and Yoko. It was also the only Beatles single to debut on the U.K. singles chart at number one. Uh, those of you who are really interested in these things, uh, when was the song recorded? It was recorded January 27th into the 28th of January 1969. It was released just two and a half months later, April 11th. Okay. What else can you talk about? A whole lot, actually. <laughs> Get Back is unusual in the Beatles canon in that almost every moment of the song's evolution has been documented, from its beginning as an offhand riff to its final mixing in several versions. That is covered in bootleg recordings, books, the 1970 documentary Let It Be, and the 2021 Peter Jackson-directed documentary, The Beatles, Get Back. The song's melody grew out of some unstructured jamming on January 7, 1969, during rehearsal sessions on the soundstage at Twickenham Studios. After working out the rhythm and harmony of the primary riff on his Hofner bass, McCartney introduced some of the lyrics, reworking Get Back to the Place You Should Be, from former um, fellow Beatles George Harrison's Silk Milk Sea and to get back to where you once belonged. McCartney had played bass on Jackie Lomax's recording of Sour Milk Sea a few months earlier. On January 9th, McCartney bought a, brought a more developed version of Get Back to the group, the Sweet Loretta verse close to its finished version. Uh, for the press release to promote the Get Back single, McCartney wrote, we were sitting in the studio and we made it up out of thin air. We started to write words there and then. When we finished it, we recorded it at Apple Studios and made it into a song to roller coast by. <laughs> at the beginning of the Let It Be version of the song, uh, Lennon can be heard jokingly saying, Sweet Loretta Fart, often misheard as fat due to Lennon's pronunciation. She thought she was a cleaner, but she was a frying pan. The album version of the song also ends with Lennon famously quipping, I'd like to say thank you on behalf of the group and ourselves, and I hope we pass the audition. He said that at the end of the January 30th, 1969 round rooftop concert on the roof of Apple Studios, but Phil Spector edited it into the studio version of Get Back that was released on the Let It Be album. In an interview with Playboy magazine in 1980, Lennon described Get Back as a better version of Lady Madonna. You know, a pot boiler re re rewrite. 
Lennon also said that there's some underlying thing about Yoko in there, saying that McCartney looked at Yoko Ono in the studio every time he sang Get Back to Where You Once Belonged. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Early protest lyrics. When McCartney introduced the song to the group during the Twickenham rehearsals, the lyrics were mostly incomplete except for the Get Back chorus. McCartney improvised various temporary lyrics, leading to what would become known in Beatles folklore as the No Pakistanis version. This version parodied the anti-immigrant views of Enoch Powell, a member of Parliament whose racially charged speeches, particularly the Rivers of Blood speech, had recently gained much media attention. The lyrics addressed attitudes towards immigrants in the United States and the United Kingdom. Don't need no Puerto Ricans living in the USA, and don't dig no Pakistanis taking all the people's jobs. Though these lyrics were meant to be a parody and a criticism of those prejudiced against immigrants. Later, during the same session, the subject of immigration came up again in an improvised jam that has become known as Commonwealth. The lyrics included a line, you'd better get back to your Commonwealth homes. On January 23rd, a group now in Apple Studios tried to record the song properly. Bootleg recordings preserved a conversation between McCartney and Harrison between takes discussing the song, and McCartney explaining the original protest song concept. The recording captures the group deciding to drop the third verse, largely because McCartney does not feel the verse is of high enough quality, although he likes the scansion of the word Pakistani. Here the song solidifies in its two verse, three solo format. <clears throat> now Billy Preston, an old friend of the Beatles, was in England for some television appearances. He joined the Beatles on keyboards from January 22nd. The group with Preston playing Fender Rhodes electric piano recorded about 10 takes on January 23rd. They made a concerted effort to per perfect to get back on January 27th, recording about 14 takes. By the time the song had the addition of a false ending and reprise coda, after numerous takes, the band jammed some old numbers and then returned to get back one last time in an attempt uh, to record the master take. This performance, Take 11, was considered to be the best yet. It was musically tight and punchy without mistakes, though the song finishes without the restart. On the session tape, George Harrison comments, We missed that end. This is the version heard on the Let It Be Naked album. On January 28th, the group attempted to recapture the previous day's performance and recorded several new takes, um, each including Nakoda. While these takes were good, they did not quite achieve the quality of the best take from the previous day. The lineup for the re-released versions of Get Back was Paul McCartney lead vocal and bass, John Lennon lead guitar and backing vocal, George Harrison, rhythm guitar, Ringo Starr, drums, and Billy Preston, electric piano. Harrison, the usual lead guitarist, had temporarily quit the group on January 10th, so Lennon worked out the lead guitar part himself and played it on the recordings. The Beatles had EMI produce a mono remix of the track on April 4th, completed by Jeff Jarrett. The Beatles were unhappy with the mix, and on April 7th, McCartney and Glenn Johns worked at Olympic Studios to produce new remixes for the single release. They're in an edited version using the best take of the main part of the song, Take 11, from January 27th, and the best coda ending from January 28th. The edit is so precise that it appears to be a continuous take, achieving the ending the Beatles had desired all along. This was a divergence from the concept of straight live performance without studio trickery, but a relatively minor one, and avoids the somewhat abrupt ending of the version that is used on the Let It Be Naked album. Beatles perform Get Back, along with other songs from the album, as part of Beatles' rooftop performance, which took place on the roof of Apple Studios in Savile Row, London, on the 30th of January, 1969, an edited version of which was included in the Let It Be film. Get Back was performed a full three times. During the third, which marked the end of the rooftop performance, Beatles were interrupted by the police who had received complaints from office workers nearby. After the police spoke to Mal Evans, he turned off Lennon and Harrison's amplifiers only for Harrison to switch them back on, insisting that they finish the song. McCartney said, 
you've been playing on the roofs again, and that's not good. And you know your mummy doesn't like that. <laughs> she gets angry. She's going to have you arrested. Get back. The third rooftop poem to get back is available on Anthology 3, the last song of the Beatles' final live performance. Um, <clears throat> at the end of the last rooftop performance of Get Back, the audience applauds, and Courtney says, Thanks, Mo, in reply to Maureen Starkey's cheering. Lennon adds, I'd like to say thank you on behalf of the group and ourselves, and I hope we pass the audition. Spectre used some of the talk preceding the master take of January 27th. Now, the, st the stereo single version, and that of the B-side, Don't Let Me Down, were the first Beatles recordings that feature Starr's drum kit and true stereo, mixed across the left and right channels. They u this utilized the then fairly new 8-track recording technology, and was a result of the growing popularity of stereo over mono. The only other Beatles track to employ this recording method was The End on Abbey Road. Um... So, let's see, the single version was released on uh, April 11th, 1969, paired with Don't Bring Me Down on the B-side. The single began its 17-week stay on the charts on April 23rd at number one in the UK and held number one for six weeks in a row. It was the first Beatles single to enter the official UK singles chart at number one. In the US, Get Back began its first of 12 weeks on the Hot 100 chart, the week ending May 10th. Two weeks after the song's chart debut, it hit number one. There it stayed for five weeks. Get Back became the, seventh, the band's 17th number one song in Billboard, matching Elvis Presley's record of 17 number ones. <clears throat> now this is interesting because they kind of had a little battle for the lead there in 1969. As the Beatles tied Elvis with 17, a few months later, Elvis hit number one with Suspicious Minds, which would be his final number one, his 18th. Then the Beatles tied Elvis again with Come Together hitting number one, so they were tied at 18. But then in 1970, they released Let It Be, the band broke up, Let It Be hit number one, and The Long and Winding Road hit number one. So then the Beatles took the lead to stay with 20 number one hits. Since then, Mariah Carey has closed with their one of 19 number ones. She has now has more than Elvis. One more. So that's enough of that. The story of the number ones. But it was an interesting battle then, and it kind of got some attention that the Elvis and the Beatles were battling for number one all time and number ones. <clears throat> anyway. Um, let's see. What else can I say? Uh, it was number one in numerous other countries as well. And uh, don't uh, the B-side, Don't Bring Me Down, or Don't Let Me Down, sorry. Don't Let Me Down. Um, got a good amount of airplay. It was got, getting played on the radio quite a bit. And enough for it to get to the top 40 on its own, hitting number 35 at its peak. Uh, we'll, uh, another video I will discuss how the chart moves have changed the charts and has had an effect on the success or a lack of success of certain songs and artists. <coughs> but uh, yeah, it was an interesting take. It was still, these sides were still charting on their own. Um, so, what else can I tell you about? Uh, McCartney's re sung the, the song uh, live here and there through the years, certain points in time, uh, including, us, <laughs> including on Saturday Night Live on December 11, 2010. He played uh, Get Back along with A Day to Life and Give the Peace a Chance, which was actually going to be a tribute to John, meaning that fall of 81, uh, where John Lennon lived for the last part of his life. Now, in terms of cover versions of Get Back, we have Rod Stewart, covered it in 1976. Um, <clears throat> actually, it was released and became a number 11 hit in the UK, his version of Get Back. Billy Preston in the movie Sgt. Pepper, Slow and Hard to Kill Band. So, I mean, we don't talk about that movie. That's a disaster, even though it had some of the huge stars in it. Um, but, but, but Billy Preston performed the song on uh, the, the Sgt. Pepper movie and then the soundtrack. And then Steve Werner, 1995, uh, country artist, did it for the Beatles tribute album Come Together America's Salute to the Beatles and hit number 72 on the country chart in 1995. Um, so, that's about it. I mean, looking at the, well, the list of number ones, the list of charts throughout the country, the chart position, basically hit number one everywhere, basically. Or if not, then top five, <laughs> for sure. All right. Now, the year in chart, 1969, it was ranked the number one song in the year in 1969 in Canada. In the 
U.S. It's listed at number 25. Cash box is number 14. Um, I kind of think it should have been ranked higher. And my own little survey I do, I did. I had my own little point system. I had to get back uh, number four in the year, 1969. On my list, I have Aquarius and Sunshine in number one. I have Sugar Sugar number two. In the year 2525, number three. And Get Back number four. That's about it. Certifications in the U.S. are certified platinum when you combine vinyl and uh, download. Um, U.K. is certified silver, 530,000 copies. Mexico, 198,000 copies. Worldwide, it's sold approximately 5 million copies. All right, so that's it. Those are the song facts for the Beatles Get Back, number 886 on my top 1,000 list. I will get this video up today. I will post a link to uh, the video description. Uh, please like the video, please share it, please subscribe, please hit the bell. If you do all those things, you'll make me a happy man. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much. I wish you all peace and love.